everybody, and welcome back to The Fumble. I'm your host, Jackie Ray. Do me a favor, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our daily content or when we have an amazing guest like we do right now. Please help me welcome Olympian and Liberian record holder in the 100 meter hurdles, Miss Ebony Morrison. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Ebony. How are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. It's amazing to meet you in person. I follow you on Instagram, so I'm excited to have you here. Awesome. I just want to go back a little bit um, and find out a little bit about you. And when did you first develop this love for track and field that you have right now? Honestly, my love came recently. For a long time, I started in fifth grade. For a long time, I was just really running to run. My mom put me in it. Um, it was just something that everybody did in the community. And um, I went to college, uh, University of Miami, ran uh, there, and then I went professional. And even when I went professional, I didn't find the love until as of recent. So the love for it really came recently. Oh, wow. Usually we hear, you know, like you said, people get into it early on and they just kind of, they just know. So it's it's interesting that it's only happened for you recently. So <laughs> Especially because you're the librarian record holder in the 100 meter meters. So how does that feel to hold that record? In the 100 meter hurdles, yeah. Um, I mean, it's an honor. You know, I just take thing everything. I take everything in stride. Um, I work really hard, and um, it's now paying off. So I'm really. Yeah. So somebody out there knows you have this record. Do you think that they're out there training to take it from you? I mean, I would hope so. That That's what progresses the sport on. You know, uh, somebody come along and take it, and then I take it right back. And that's, you know, that's the competitive uh, love that everyone has for the sport. I love it. I'm going to take it right back. <laughs> now, I did see you on your Instagram. You were live from the opening ceremonies. It was so incredibly beautiful. I could tell that it was such an experience. And you got to carry the flag as well. What did that mean to you? Just, it was, when you walked in, so when you, um, they take you on a long, long, long merry-go-round around the, um, around the stadium and all the countries are lined up and, um, everyone has their flag and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of bright, but not really. But when you step into the stadium and, you know, they call your country's name and you walk out and all the lights are flashing and then you have everyone waving, the feeling was like so amazing. It was surreal. It just felt, uh, the, the stadium was just filled with so much love. So it was really an amazing experience. How did you get to be the one to carry the flag? Yeah, so Tokyo actually in, enacted the first um, dual uh, fl uh, flag bearing, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but two people to carry the flag. Usually it's only one person. So they selected me and uh, my teammate Joseph. And um, we were trying to figure out how to how we was going to share share the flag. So I was like, how about I just stand in front and hold the flag up? He was like, yeah, do that. So that's how that happened. <laughs> that's amazing. You guys look so beautiful out there. I love to see you guys on the IG Live. You guys seem like you were all vibing so, so well. And your outfits were by the new Liberian American designer, Tel Telfar? Is that how you say Telfar? Yeah, Telfar, and yes. That, his, his line has gone super viral on social media. Why do you think his bags are so sought after and what does that mean to the Liberian community? Oh man, we were so grateful to have him as our sponsor. It was amazing. You know, I've known uh, about the Telfar brand, but I had no idea that he was actually Liberian. So my teammate mm -hmm. Emmanuel was in contact with him, and they set the whole thing up. And he was so, he like there was no question. Like as soon as they asked him to do it, he was like, "Yes." It was everything just gelled and meshed so amazingly. His bags are so cute. His clothes are so cute. They actually just saw Beyonce in, um, in one of his bags. So like, he's really, really taken off. They're almost at like a million followers on Instagram now. Yeah, I saw that. And it, cause I just was introduced to the brand just because of the Olympics. So does this kind of mean something to the librarian community? Are you on the map now? Because now you have this this amazing designer that's backing you and is known, like you said, worldwide. Once once the Beehive knows you, you're pretty much worldwide at that point. Yeah, it really means a lot to the community because, you know, Li Liberia's history and past isn't so beautiful, but to have such a, a beautiful name to back us and have the support of him, and then now it really up uplifts the community. So, like, we're just so excited, so blessed and grateful to have this collaboration. Right. 
Now, there's a lot of stress that goes into the Olympics, and a lot of people were really proud of Naomi Osaka and Simone Biles for coming forward with their mental health issues and taking a step back. How did you feel seeing them do that? You know, I saw this tweet on Twitter, and it was it resonated so much with me, and it said, um, for Black women, rest in itself. Mm. Because our ancestors have worked so hard and endlessly and for them to you know take that time to not worry about what naysayers may say and you know actually do something for themselves as black women like I was empowered by that movement it was unfortunate to have so many naysayers but you know at the end of the day you have to do what's best for you and I'm in full support of everything that they were doing so like I said there is a lot of pressure you know exactly how that pressure feels how do you deal with that pressure I meditate a lot. Mm. I, I pray a lot. And I have an amazing community of people that surround themselves with, surround me with nothing but positivity. So that's really what has kept me grounded. I saw on your Instagram, you do have your own daily meditations. What do you, what's your first meditation you do every day? Well, I, I pray and, you know, thank the Lord for waking me up. But, um, you know, I really work on um, breathing techniques. That's what has helped me a lot when I get have any, like, anxious or an anxiety bouts that happen. Uh, first thing I do is I stop and I breathe. You know, I tell myself that, you know, I'm present. Everything is okay. And then, you know, I come back to reality and I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw on a lot of different Instagram posts what the Olympic Village looks like, but... We're just seeing it secondhand. Can you kind of tell us firsthand what the Olympic Village was like? Yeah, so uh, we were in Building 18, and we were right off the water. So um, if we were facing the water, we saw the entire city. It was so beautiful. And then um, when you step back outside the building, there's like, it looks like, well, they're going to turn them into apartments, sell them as apartments. So basically you're in kind of like when you're in college and you're in those quads, and then you have a, a room and a room and a room, and you're just mm. all case that's how our building was other people's buildings look more like hotel apartments so it was really really different i was told in previous uh, olympics they had uh, it was like an encasing thing but this one really felt kind of like you were in your own little city we were in a bubble so so how bad were those cardboard beds <laughs> you really were not bad at all let me stop lying the <laughs> The cardboard itself, you didn't feel the cardboard because there was a mattress. The mattress was not that great. The cardboard was very sturdy. We had one of our uh, sprinters, Emmanuel, jump on the bed and it held up pretty good. It made a little crunchy noise, but it held up pretty good. <laughs> and actually, USA, um, the USA team, they bought like some of their bigger like throwers and other people, they bought them actual like Tempur-Pedic beds. So mm. they, oh boy, they had real, real beds. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice, right? <laughs> right. Okay, so Ebony, I know you obviously love track and field. Is there any other Olympic sport that you really enjoyed watching? Uh, Well, gymnastics, of yeah. course. I actually did not get to go to any of the venues because, you know, they didn't have any spectators. Like, mm. uh, yeah, so that was unfortunate. I would have went to go see uh, basketball and um, gymnastics and boxing, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. So I know you said you developed this love for track and field kind of late in life. Is there any other sport that you ever thought about competing in? Girl, I tried soccer. I tried <laughs> soccer. I tried volleyball. I am not coordinated enough. I got to run. I got to run in the straight line. As <laughs> I know that's right. So when you said there was no spectators, are you used to having kind of that crowd energy? Was it a little strange to go out and compete without that? Actually, I loved it. Mm. The Growing up as a little girl, you you know, you see the Olympics on TV, the, the glitz, the glamour, the oh my God, right? When I stepped into the stadium, it felt like a regular track meet. I was so calm. Every, it, was a, it was an amazing experience because it's like I'm on this world stage, this big stage, and I just feel normal. So I was really blessed to, to have that experience. Yeah, because that's, I know sometimes a lot of people, they get inside their head when they're in those moments. But I guess that's when meditation would come in as well, if you do get inside your head, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give anyone that's coming up in any sport or any anything that they want to do in life? Because there's going to always be some sort of pressure 
that comes along with that. What advice would you give to young people that as they pursue their dreams? I would say, and it sounds so cliche, but you literally cannot give up. Like, all you need is consistency. You don't even have to be good right now. But if you stay at it and stay at it and stay at it, you can't do anything but elevate. I love that. That's not cliche at all. That was beautiful. So are you going to compete again? How soon is your next competition? Yeah, so we have World Indoors in Serbia. That's in March. So uh, we're getting, well, I'm on. I'm off all of August. I start back up in September, and then we'll be getting ready for World Indoors. Then I have African Champs, and then I have World Outdoors. I think we miss that sometimes. There's a lot of traveling that you do as well. Mm -hmm. Is that mentally and physically exhausting, or are you just kind of used to it now? Physically, it can be a bit tiring, but, you know, it's it's a part of the game, so. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ebony, for joining us. It was such a pleasure having you here. Is there anything else you want to share with our fans before we go? No, just, uh, you know, continue to support track and field because we are a lonely sport. We don't get as much love as all these other sports, but we put our soul into this sport. So please continue to support us. Oh, yes. And shout out your IG because your IG is amazing. So shout out your IG so they can all go follow you. Okay, on Instagram and all social media, I'm elbow uh, with two W's underscore knee, elbow knee. Yes, it's a it's a beautiful page, you guys. She's got all kinds of things going on. You can see the live you did was like a half hour with you and your teammates. It's fantastic. So thank you for so, so much for joining us again. You guys, don't forget to check out that IG. Once again, I'm Jackie Ray. Thanks for watching The Fumble, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.